Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Thanks for stopping by. Um, if you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. And when you do, be sure and tap on the notification bell so you'll be notified every time we put up a new video. Also, if you tap the little like button, we benefit. So thank you very much. Okay. In our last video, one of the things I, well, I did two things, I think. I removed the wheel and I, and I put the uh, insert in for the seat. So, <laughs> let me tell you, it's like everything else on this bike. All you have to do is remove a part, go into the next one, and you will have a problem. There is something awful lurking in there. The brake was really in good shape as soon as I got all the junk, years and years of grease and garbage off of it. Gee, it's a pretty nice brake. So I'm going to be reassembling the brake as soon as I finish talking about the wheel. I pulled that wheel off, took it over to my friend's shop. I had taken it off on the wake weekend, so I had to wait till they were open. Put it on his tire machine pulled the tire off of it, took one look at the wheel and said, you got to be kidding me. Let me show you this wheel. This rim, I didn't get it up here on the lift. I think Mark can come in on it a little easier. This rim is so rusted, it is going through to the other side. It's very rare that I've actually seen one rust all the way through. This thing is so rusted. So I thought, well, let's see, let me go dig up a good rim and order a set of spokes and spend money I don't have. And I started searching and searching and I found another wheel in pretty good shape. I'd say that wheel's in as good a shape as the rest of the bike, at least. So we're going to use that wheel and I put the new tire on it and it's all ready to go. So I feel much better about it. But the thing to remember is when you're washing your bike with water, which that's a normal thing to wash with, that there's a hole where each spoke is in the rim. And the water goes in there and it settles in there and it stays in there and it really rusts things. Now, if you ride your motorcycle a lot, put a lot of miles on it, you change tires fairly often. So when you change tires, you want to look at that. And if it's starting to rust, take a good wire brush, either on a drill or by hand, clean it up real well, and paint it. And it'll help preserve it for quite a while. I used to do that a lot on, on my shovel head because I was going through tires and wheels pretty fast. Anyway, on to the brake. So I got this all cleaned up. The brake shoes are not like new, but they're good. And of course, the next time Mike, the owner of this bike, is in there, which will be the next time he puts a tire on it. So right now he's going to have a new tire. So these brakes will last, these shoes will last at least the length of uh, the life of that uh, tire. So what I'm going to do is my usual white lithium grease. And what's funny is I first became acquainted with white lithium grease <coughs> hanging out in a brake shop because that is the, the lubricant they use in all the drum brakes. And that's where I learned about it originally. Again, was hanging out in a brake shop with an old guy that my dad grew up with who was even to this day, he did brakes better than anyone I ever met. And he was a really neat old guy. So what I'm doing is anywhere where there's any movement, we have metal rubbing against metal, I want lubricant in this case, white lithium. Now there's kind of a trick to putting these on. It's really, really easy. The only time it gets difficult is when someone's watching you do it. So uh, prepare yourself for that. Or maybe I'm preparing myself for that. Anyway, 
So here is the springs, the return springs. And of course, that's going to be metal on metal. So I'm going to put that, that's the bottom one. And that's the top one. Uh, there's the bottom one. And here is the top one. up here, get it hooked in there, okay, all right, now let me get something to wipe my hands with, uh, I covered it up, okay, you gonna, I gotta have something here, let me get a rag, there we go. That's better. Try to remember to get everything out before the video starts. Okay, now you can see where these parts are going to go. You can see the angles we got to have them out here. Like I said, it's real easy unless someone's watching you. There it is. And I'll bet that looked real easy because it wasn't very hard. But like I said, when someone's watching you, sometimes that's just a bit much. Okay. This cup goes right here and holds those shoes in place. And we'll put a cotter pin in there. And a really strong thumbnail will probably take care of that. And there we have it. Let's get a little bit of a close on that. Now, the shoes are pretty much retracted as far as they're going to be for now. But we can see how they work. This is how they work. And we'll adjust that up when we're done. And that's it. Okay, the next thing is going to be the, uh, the brake drum. Let's put the brake drum on. I want to get the wheel up there and say, whoops, I forgot the brake drum. Ooh, can't move it now. All right. So now we'll, uh, let's see here. I think I'm going to let the air out of this tire. This wheel is going to be, this tire is going to be harder to get in there than the uh, tire I took off was to get out. And the reason for that is this is a, a pretty fat tire, but it makes such a comfortable ride, as comfortable as possible on one of these ridges, that that's, that's why I use it. Okay, the air is out of the tire. Now we'll see if this frame is up high enough to get this tire in here. I think so. Mm, it's hard in this weather. Maybe we'll lift it up a little more. I think 
we lift it up, we can get under it and lower right down onto it. I think that's about it. Let's see what it does. And that's still going to be hard to get over that wire. I think I got it in there. Now I'm going to lower it down and see that it goes in there. It's kind of a gazenta. That gazenta there. And we just about got it. And there it is. That was a little easier than usual. Okay, we'll get it back off the deck here, and, and, and find where it goes. Can't see without a flashlight. And there's one now. I'd say it's about there. <laughs> and that popped it right on there. Very well, I might add. So, that being done, we can put the, put the lug bolts back in, Now I did look inside this hub and make sure the bearings were in good shape and lube everything so that uh, I can feel okay about it.
I mean, it would be nice to have a nice new pretty set of spokes, but I checked the torque on all of them. All of them took up just an itty bitty bit, which means that they were free and moving on their threads. Everything was fine. And again, much better than the other one. Now I'm not tightening these up, I'm just starting all of them on here. Then we'll get the, the axle in there. And there it is. I believe we have five lug bolts in there. And like I said, I'm just taking the slack out of all of them. All right. So we'll tighten them back up before we're done. Here is the spacer. And here is the axle. Let me put some grease on that axle, Mike. Excuse me. This is a nice axle. I mean, it's a nice shape. So we'll get ready to put that in. And here is the spacer. We'll lift the wheel, make sure it's in nice position. Let's see here. Well, it looks like I've got a little bit of problem with this here axle adjuster. So we'll just back it up out of the way. I'll have to adjust the chain after I get the wheel all finished anyway. Get this adjuster out of the way. And the axle will slide right into place. Guess I need to back it off some more. Hmm. Well. Back them both off. Make sure they're not fighting with each other. Well, that frees up this side. Now it will slide forward with no difficulty. All 
Okay. That axle should just go right into place. About like that. Okay. I know what happened. I was demonstrating these parts a while ago and got them completely thrown out of place. Anyway, so the wheel is on now. What I'm going to want to do is adjust the chain. When I finish adjusting the chain, we'll adjust the brake. We'll probably go through that on our next video. So this tire is on and ready to go. And in our next video, we'll go over adjusting that brake and adjusting the chain. So until, you know what? One more thing. I promised the seat. So let me do the seat. And then in our next video, we'll do those two adjustments. But I did put that insert in there, and I know everybody wanted to see how that was going to work. Anybody who'd never used one. Okay. This is the seat that a buddy of mine had on one of his bikes. Okay. And Harley always uses a nylon. Yeah, I got it, Mike. It's okay. I got it. Harley always uses a nylon washer under the seat bracket here. For those of you who are into OEM Harley parts, it's part number 6410. And there is the bolt holding the seat. quarter 28 bolt in it and I just picked up a half inch wrench instead of a 7 16 which means there's a 7 16 right here now this seat may not fit perfect may not look perfect but it's a nice seat and it's going to be comfortable As comfortable as you can be on a rigid chopper. Let's see. Alrighty. All tightened down and ready to go. And I'd say it looks pretty good on there. So in our next video, like I said, we will adjust that brake and the chain. So until then, I'll see you out on the road.